Now, wait a minute. What do you want? She's your wife, not me. I don't run around with married men. I did it for you. To get you what you wanted. Life stories of child actresses always have happy endings, and Linda Darnell's story is no exception. Linda Darnell was among the most iconic faces on the silver screen in the 1940s. Her talent and beauty quickly propelled her to fame as one of the leading female movie stars. Despite being adored by Hollywood, she soon discovered the many dangers of Hollywood. No matter how hard she tried, happiness always seemed to slip through her fingers. There was always a distance between happiness and Linda. Known for her perfect face, Darnell tragically met a brutal end, all because of one terrible split-second decision. Do you know the tragic incident of Linda's life? If not, then join us in this video. Linda Darnell was born on October 16, 1923, in Dallas, Texas. Linda Darnell was born into a large family, but her parents didn't have a happy marriage. Her mother, Margaret Pearl Brown, had two children from a previous marriage before marrying Darnell's father, Calvin Roy Darnell. Together, they had four more children, including Linda. Their crowded house was filled with constant bickering and arguments. Unfortunately, Darnell's mother didn't do much to improve the toxic environment at home. Despite Darnell being a shy child, her mother Pearl became obsessed with making her a movie star and was willing to do anything to achieve that goal. Pearl started to neglect her other children, focusing solely on Darnell's career. However, Darnell had her own struggles. She was still very young and unsure about what she wanted to do with her life when her mother took control of her future. To make matters worse, Darnell didn't even believe in herself. She once said, I had no great talent and I didn't want to be a movie star, but my mother had always wanted it for herself, and I guess she achieved it through me. Darnell paid a heavy price for her mother's dreams. Her childhood, spent chasing fame, left her feeling lonely and isolated. She had difficulty making friends at school because she couldn't relate to her peers. She never attended her high school graduation or went to college. Instead, Darnell worked on a stage to support her family, which even worried the entertainment industry. By the age of 13, Darnell was already an experienced stage actor, but her mother still wanted more. When Darnell turned 14, Pearl tried to launch her film career. Surprisingly, even the notoriously ruthless Hollywood studios thought she was too young and turned her down, at least for a while. A year later, they signed her, and that's when her downward spiral began. Darnell was young and innocent at the age of 15 years. She moved into a Hollywood apartment all by herself, dreaming of becoming a big movie star like so many other girls at the time. As luck would have it, she got her first big break with a film called Hotel for Women, which turned out to be a huge success. This made her an up-and-coming actress. But there was a problem. Even though Darnell was now a studio actress, many producers thought she was too young for the more mature roles she auditioned for. To get around this, Darnell initially claimed she was 17, and the studio took it a step further, promoting her as a 19-year-old. This situation was already pretty disturbing, but it got worse. The studio knew she was underage and still chose to lie about it. This put Darnell in a very vulnerable position. Being pushed into the entertainment industry at such a young age made her an easy target for exploitation. A columnist once wrote that she was so young, so immature, and so naive that she couldn't tell who her real friends were. By the time she figured out that she was being taken advantage of, it was too late. Darnell trusted her boss, studio executive Daryl F. Zanuck, who had cast her in her first film. What she didn't realize until much later was that Zanuck had an unhealthy obsession with her. He was a real creep, pursuing her, even though he knew she was underage. He was also very manipulative, giving her good roles whenever she was pleasant and agreeable. Although Darnell eventually fought her way out of this dark situation, she didn't come out unscathed. Working in Hollywood turned out to be an education all on its own. Darnell's stunning looks were both a blessing and a curse. She never went through an awkward phase because she was always seen as beautiful. Publications called her the girl with a perfect face due to her Latin features, dark hair, and eyes. Life magazine even said she looked 23 when she was only 16, labeling her the most physically perfect girl in Hollywood. Because of her mature appearance, she quickly landed adult roles. After this, in 1939, Darnell starred alongside heartthrob Tyrone Power in Daytime Wife, playing his spouse, 
even though he was almost a decade older than her. This was only her second film, but it set the tone for her career. The producer, Zanuck, who already had lustful intentions towards her, exploited her further. In 1940, Darnell again starred with Tyrone Power in Brigham Young, a film that became successful largely because of their on-screen chemistry. Zanuck, recognizing their popularity, added more romantic scenes between them, which boosted the film's success. This move catapulted Darnell to new heights in her career. Brigham Young was reportedly 20th Century Fox's most expensive film at the time, and its success turned Darnell into a high-profile actress, earning her a substantial income. However, Darnell's youthful appeal lasted only for a while. Being in the public eye from a young age damaged her confidence. The girl once called the most physically perfect in the world grew up distrustful of others and their compliments. She explained that in the film industry, people build you up, making you feel wonderful, but this security is only temporary. Just a few years after her debut, Darnell struggled to find work as the magic faded, and being young and pretty was no longer enough. On one hand, 20th Century Fox had trouble finding her new and exciting roles, and on the other, she was becoming old news to the audience. As Darnell got older, Zanuck became more aggressive in his advances. When she continued to reject him, he retaliated by hindering her career. As the public's interest in Darnell waned, Zanuck lost interest too, eventually stopping her from getting roles altogether. But if Zanuck was a toxic figure in Darnell's life, her mother, Pearl, was even worse. Even after Darnell became famous in Hollywood, her mother continued to nag her and control her career. Hollywood insiders knew Pearl as Darnell's overbearing and possessive mother. Then in 1940, Pearl made a shocking accusation against her husband, turning Darnell's life into a nightmare. In 1940, just as Darnell's star was rising, her mother Pearl did something shocking. Pearl accused her husband of having a relationship with one of his stepdaughters, which tore the family apart. By 1942, the tension between her parents became unbearable for Darnell. She took her younger sister and left home, never to return. Unfortunately, this decision led to a significant mistake. After Darnell tried to escape the family drama, her mother sought revenge. Pearl, who had spent years grooming Darnell to be a star, couldn't bear to lose control over her. To retaliate, Pearl went to the press with news of their family troubles, and the media eagerly spread the gossip. This resulted in bad publicity for Darnell, but her problems didn't end there. By 1942, Darnell was already feeling overwhelmed. Then things took a darker turn when someone began blackmailing her, demanding $2,000 and threatening bodily harm if she didn't pay. The studio where Darnell worked got the FBI involved, and they discovered that the blackmailer was just a high school student with too much free time. However, Darnell's real struggles came from her toxic work environment. In 1943, Darnell expressed her frustration with the unchallenging roles her studio, 20th Century Fox, kept assigning her. This caused tension with the studio, which decided to punish her by loaning her out for a supporting role in a B-movie at another studio. Ironically, the punishment backfired. The movie was City Without Men, 1943, and Darnell enjoyed the experience. The new studio treated her with respect and saw her as a reputable actress unlike her experience at 20th Century Fox. Seeing Darnell's happiness, Fox quickly intervened. When casting her in a B-movie didn't teach her the intended lesson, they resorted to harsher measures and suspended her in April 1943. Even after the suspension was lifted, Darnell, who was once a leading lady, was only offered minor roles, if any. But there were also other hidden reasons behind her suspension. In April 1943, Linda Darnell secretly married Pev Marley, one of her cameramen, despite the fact that no one was happy about it. Darnell's boss, Daryl F. Zanuck, was likely jealous and responded by suspending her from work. Critics pointed out that Marley, at 42, was old enough to be the 19-year-old Darnell's father. Additionally, Marley introduced Darnell to bad habits, including heavy drinking, which soon became a problem for her as well. The once mild-mannered Darnell began to show signs of change, throwing temper tantrums and gaining weight. Despite the toll her marriage took on her, Darnell's career was about to improve. In 1944, she finally achieved an image change she'd long desired. 
She took on the role of Olga in Summer Storm, a character far different from the innocent roles she was known for. This role marked a turning point, and after Summer Storm, Darnell starred in various films, including westerns. During the filming of My Darling Clementine, she fell in love with Howard Hughes, a wealthy womanizer with a terrible reputation. Darnell's friend, actress Ann Miller, warned her about Hughes, but Darnell didn't listen. As expected, Hughes eventually broke her heart. Darnell was even willing to divorce her husband to marry Hughes, but he rejected her advances. Heartbroken, Darnell returned to her husband, which led to an awkward and strained homecoming. In 1947, Darnell was given a challenging role in Forever Amber. However, working on this film was difficult for her, as she had to act alongside Marley, whom she had recently cheated on. To prepare for the role, she underwent strict dieting, voice training, and a change in appearance, which took a toll on her health. During filming, Darnell became very sick and even fainted twice. Unfortunately, the film did not live up to expectations, leaving Darnell devastated. On a positive note, the filming of Forever Amber helped Darnell and Marley reconcile, and they decided to adopt a baby girl in 1948, naming her Charlotte Mildred Marley, or Lola for short. However, just as things seemed to be improving, Darnell once again deceived her husband. Linda Darnell had a difficult love life, which was marked by bad decisions in relationships. After adopting a daughter with her husband Marley, she fell for director Joseph L. Mankiewicz, who directed her most praised film, A Letter to Three Wives. Despite him being married to actress Rose Stradner, this didn't stop their affair. Soon after, Darnell got ready to divorce Marley, only to face betrayal once again. Darnell invested deeply in her relationship with Mankiewicz, a mistake she'd regret. Even when he made it clear he wouldn't leave his wife, she stayed with him for six years, considering him the love of her life. However, Mankiewicz viewed things differently. He never publicly admitted their affair and instead called her a marvelous girl with terrifying personal problems. Their relationship took a toll on Darnell's mental health. In 1949, she fell into depression and needed therapy. That same year, Mankiewicz left her to focus on his career, driving Darnell to the brink of taking her own life. She wasn't fully free from him until the mid-1950s, but by then, her marriage with Marley was beyond repair. On July 19, 1950, Darnell agreed to separate from him, but Marley demanded a large settlement of $125,000, which nearly left her bankrupt. A year later, Darnell filed for divorce, accusing Marley of being rude and critical toward her and her family. After a brief hearing, she won the case, gaining custody of their daughter and forcing Marley to pay child support. Her personal life wasn't the only thing falling apart. So was her career. By the early 1950s, Darnell appeared in fewer notable films, and in 1952, her contract with 20th Century Fox ended. Initially, she was excited about the freedom and planned to rebuild her career in Europe. However, it wasn't as easy as she thought. After leaving the studio, she quickly regretted it as she struggled to find work. In Europe, she starred in a few films, but they didn't help her career much. She returned to Hollywood and accepted roles from past lovers, including Howard Hughes and Mankiewicz. She even returned to 20th Century Fox, which had started producing television shows. Her last acting work saw her return to the stage, but fate cut her career short. In 1957, Darnell married pilot Merle Roy Robertson, but their relationship faced challenges. Her depression resurfaced, and she fell back into old habits of heavy drinking. After rehab, she started to recover, but Robertson suffered from her instability. Like her previous marriages, this one ended badly. Darnell took Robertson to court, accusing him of cheating with a Polish actress and fathering an illegitimate child. She won the case, but sadly, her new chapter in life was tragically short-lived. On April 8, 1965, Linda Darnell was at the home of her former secretary, Jean Curtis. She spent the evening with Jean and her daughter, Patty. The three of them stayed up late watching Stardust, an early film that had greatly boosted Darnell's fame in the 1940s. Watching the movie made Darnell feel nostalgic, and she began talking to Jean and Patty about the peak of her Hollywood career. However, this peaceful evening took a tragic turn. Darnell spent the night at Jean's house, but at 3.30 a.m., Patty woke her mother up, saying she felt unusually hot. A fire had started in the living room, 
where they had been sitting earlier. Darnell remained calm and told John to get Patty out of the house first through a window on the second floor. Patty broke her leg when she jumped, but made it out safely. John was about to jump too, but looked back to make sure Darnell was following. Sadly, Darnell wasn't behind her. Afraid to make the two-story jump, Darnell decided to try going down the stairs to escape through the door. Unfortunately, she never made it. Firefighters found her on the living room floor, with burns covering 80% of her body. She was rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. On April 10th, at the age of 41, Linda Darnell passed away. What do you think of Linda Darnell's life? Were her struggles due to her own choices, or were they the result of a difficult childhood? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.